Hello, thank you for joining us today here on the Motor City Church YouTube channel. We're so excited to connect with you and to bring you life-giving, hope-filled messages. I encourage you, take just a moment, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure that you like this video and we'd love to hear how it's helped you. Please do that and we look forward to connecting with you more and more right here at Motor City Church. Today's message, I believe, is going to be a great encouragement to you and your life. But this month is Pride Month. And I thought, well, what a great topic. Since it's Pride Month, why don't we talk about it? Uh, why don't we talk about one of the most frustrating topics I could ever preach on, and that's pride. And we're going to deconstruct, everyone's deconstructing everything, so we're going to deconstruct pride a little bit here today. It, it's really frustrating to teach about pride anyway, to talk about pride, because when you think who really needs to hear a message on pride, it would be proud people, right? But if you're proud, you're probably not going to listen to the message. So it gets really annoying and frustrating because the people who really need to hear the message are the pride, proud ones. And they're not going to really, they're going to sit back and say, well, that's not for me. I don't need to listen to that today. Uh, I'm not arrogant. I'm not proud. But the Bible talks a lot to us about this subject of pride. What does it say? And as I started studying, I thought, man, I, I have a lot more of that than I thought. Well, what's the opposite of pride? The opposite of pride is humility. And so I decided at, at Motor City Church, we're going to declare this humble month. Instead of pride month, it's going to be humble month. And I want to teach you a little bit on the power of humility and how pride, where pride comes into this whole thing in the Bible. Like the Pharisees. Jesus confronted the Pharisees. Remember, we've been talking about them. And the ones who needed to hear the message that Jesus was giving, he said they didn't have ears to hear, right? They weren't responding. They weren't getting it. It was for them. You ever given someone a message like, hello, that was for you, but you're not getting it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? So that's how it is. With, that's why you don't see a lot of books on pride. Not a lot of books on pride because people that are prideful don't think they need the book. So how do we deal with it? What are we going to talk about? Let's look at it here. Um, we, like I said, we just spent four weeks talking about angry Jesus and uh, how God was kind of harsh toward the people who wouldn't listen to him. And, and, and just even starting this whole sermon, and I don't know how far we'll get. We'll get a little ways till I run out of time, and then um, we'll finish it up later. But um, I have a, just a little pessimism just thinking about the proud people in this room that aren't going to listen anyway. So I prayed this week that the God of the breakthrough would come through for me. And I'm going to ask you this morning, if you would, please, just everybody in the room, if, if you would, just be open. Just be open to considering that maybe possibly you deal with a little bit of pride. I mean, just be, just be open to it. I mean, would you, how many would be open to just thinking that possibly, how about this, just thinking possibly you may be the most arrogant person in the whole room. Okay, nobody wants to be open to this. Okay, that's okay. I'm going to give it anyway because uh, you need this message. And if you think you don't need it, you probably need it more than anybody else. So um, let's, let's look at it. God's putting this message here for us. You, 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 if you can't be open to receive it, then it's probably because you're dealing with pride. And uh, it's a tough topic because we've all struggled with it. We've all struggled with the sin of pride. It's one that I know I've struggled with throughout my life. It plagues people. And uh, people fight against it. And it's hard because people really don't take the sin of pride real seriously. I mean, he's got a little bit of pride, you know, it, but it's not really that bad of a sin. I mean, murder is a lot worse than a little bit of pride. I mean, everybody deals with a little bit of pride. But here's what the Bible says about pride. Proverbs 16, verse 5, the Lord detests the proud. They will surely be punished. Oh, wow. I, I like it in the Message Bible. It makes it just a little more you know, palatable to today, kind of translations today. It says, God can't stomach arrogance or pretense. Believe me, he'll put those braggarts in their place. Now, when he used words like detest or he can't stomach it, 
I, I like, I, he's, he's, he's like so disgusted with it, he doesn't even want to deal with people that have pride. I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that person that God detests. Right? I don't, I don't want to be that person. And God, the God would look at me and say, oh man, he's so into himself. He's always drawing attention to himself. I don't even want to look at him. He's detestable. I mean, who wants to imagine God looking at you like that? Like you're, you, you make my stomach hurt. You ever known anybody like that? You're like, oh God, just thinking about them makes my stomach hurt. Anybody know anybody? Come on, be honest. Don't point at him, but just be honest if you know somebody like that right? That's what God says. That's how he is with prideful people. They make his stomach hurt. Now, we, we, just, we just don't look at pride, though, as this awful sin, but yet it, it's here in the Bible. So when, when, I, when, I, when I come up here and I confess, I deal with a little bit of pride. Yeah, I've got some, I've got some pride. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, let's pray for him. He's got a little bit of pride, whatever that may be. I mean, it's, I'm not an awful person, Right, you don't look at me as like an awful person because I have a little bit of pride. But, but I mean, what if I came up here and said, hey guys, uh, listen, I've been struggling a little bit with, with lust. I mean, I've got some lust. It's like, I mean, it's to the point where I'm actually checking a few of you out right now. <laughs> Someone said, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, we are not coming back to this church. That pastor's a pervert, you know. That's disgusting. He's up there telling us he deals with this. But yet, which one's worse? It's funny how we like to categorize these sins, right? I struggle with pride. Oh, yeah, you know, who doesn't? But I'm, I, I struggle with, oh, oh, man, pray for, let's get out of here. Let's, let's, and, and like I was saying a couple weeks ago, in angry Jesus, there's not different levels of, of sin. Matter of fact, we're going to see in just a minute where God puts pride. He puts it in a whole list of sins, like murder and adultery and all these other things. So every day when we wake up, we have a choice. We can put the spotlight on ourselves, or we can put the spotlight on Jesus. Our job as believers is to put the spotlight on him. I can talk about what I've accomplished, what I've done. Look at me. Look at everything I've done. Look at everywhere I've been. And what am I doing? I'm shining the spotlight on me. But I wouldn't have gone anywhere or done anything or been anywhere if it wasn't for him. Because every gift, every talent, everything I've got came from him. So my job is to say, hey, don't look at me. It's all because of him. Right? We would think if I'm always talking about me, that would make me a, a prideful person. But really, pride is anyone who draws attention to themselves. We always think it's just someone with a big, huge ego. Got a big ego problem. Oh, they're so prideful. Got this big ego problem. But what if pride was someone who talked about how horrible they were, how bad they were, just that still shining the light on themselves. I'm just so pathetic. I'm pitiful. Please talk to me. Please counsel me. Please look at me. Please help me, 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 me. And still, that's pride because it's drawing attention to you. The Bible says whatever we do, we are to do to the glory of God, to show off who he is and to point people to him. Does your life look like that? Is what you do pointing people to Jesus or what you do pointing people to yourself? Are you the kind of person that, who, who cares what, what, what this person thinks about me, what that person thinks about me? Or am I like, I don't care what anybody else, all I care about is what God thinks about me. And I want to lift him up and point people to him. I was doing a study on this power of humility, and I found a book called The Power of Humility by R.T. Kendall. Great author. He's written over 50 books. Pastored Westminster Church in London for years. And um, the publisher asked him to do this book on humility. And so as he began to, to, to study for it, they said, by the way, can you give us an outline of what's going to be in the book? He said, I've never done that. They said, what's well, a new policy? He said, that's ridiculous. I'm not a novice author. I've written 50 books. You've sold thousands of books that, that I've written, and now you want any. He said he started getting a little upset and a little bit of arrogant when he all of a sudden he realized that um, the irony of the whole thing. He was discussing writing a book about pride, and yet his pride almost aborted the production of the very book that he was going to write, and he began to see how his pride was becoming more important than the book that he was contemplating. He came to his senses and, of course, immediately sent an outline to the book called The Power of Humility. I don't know about you, but I can think of examples in my own life. Where I'm like, you want me to, do you know how long I've been doing this? 
Are you, you seriously want me to, what, are you kidding? And I thought, oh my goodness, you hear this message on pride and you think of one thing, but yet there's so many areas of our life where we deal with this. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it today. I'm not perfect, so don't think, well, he's just, he must have won a big victory over pride. And that's what qualifies him to speak on this. And uh, that's not true at all. I haven't won the whole victory over it. Uh, I mean, sometimes I do pretty good. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm really, most of the time, I'm pretty proud of how humble I am. That was a joke, people. Chuckle, chuckle. Even as I talk about my own weaknesses, I'm reminded of just how pervasive this, this is. And, and uh, I'm admitting to a sin that nobody wants to admit to. Nobody wants to admit that they have pride because they're too prideful to admit it. But I find it easier to admit it when I'm doing a sermon because it's not, it, it, you know, it's, it's, um, um, you know, it, it's because of our, our pride. Pride usually, uh, the true explanation of, which pride's really why you get your feelings hurt, because of pride. When you start thinking about what pride really is, pride is why we hate being passed over for an invitation. Someone says, hey, we're going to dinner. No one invited you. Oh, Pride. Maybe pride is why we won't admit we made a mistake, why we feel rejection, why we get ourselves in trouble and don't ask for help, why we want to be seen with certain people or, or we're afraid that we won't get the credit for what we did or why we stay angry all the time or why we're jealous or why you get a divorce. Pride is at the bottom, pride is at the bottom of envy and jealousy. Jealousy and pride are kind of cousins. They're part of the same dysfunctional family called the human race. Having pride, well, look what the Bible says. Never has anything good to say. I can't find anywhere in the Bible has any good things to say about pride. It gives a list I told you about earlier, Mark chapter 7, verse 21, from within, because it comes from within, out of a person's heart comes evil thoughts. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustfulness, desire, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within, and they are what defile you. Wow. I mean, pride, oh, everyone's got a little pride, but yet it's in the same as lust, greed, anger, murder, theft, One way I think you could define pride is taking yourself too seriously. Some people do that. They just take themselves a little too seriously. And it's one of the common denominators I find uh, among proud people. Uh, it describes why you resent criticism. Oh, I don't like wanting somebody to correct me. I, I love criticism, constructive criticism. I don't mind it at all. I've always been, always been, you know, tell me. I want to learn. I want to do better. Tell me. Don't just look for ways just to cut people down. But constructive criticism is a good thing. But pride is kind of um, people who are insecure really deal with pride. See, everything in the kingdom is upside down, right? You give to receive. You increase to decrease. You go up to go down. You go down to go up. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, the, so pride, the opposite would be humility. And that's what God asks of us. And, and, and some of us think, well, we got it all together. Like, like prideful people like to blame others for their problems. They hate taking the blame. They can't bear not getting the credit for the good they did. They got to prove themselves all the time. So this morning, I want us to deal with this pride by looking at how to develop humility and how to have a humble attitude. A lot of people even have the wrong idea of what humility is. They think that it means you just walk around lowly and just with this look on your face. Look, humility has nothing to do with a look on your face. Well, he just looks so humble. Of all the virtues, humility of all the virtues is the hardest one to gain and maintain because all, all, we, we all want to be first. We all want to be noticed. We all want to be recognized. We all want to be important. And we can. We can be all those things. You can be important. You can be recognized. Uh, you can, but, but all those things, it, it has to be 
in Christ, not in yourself. It has to be in Christ. We are everything in Christ. I am nothing in myself. I don't deserve anything in myself. Anything I've accomplished wasn't for myself. It was for the glory of God. Everything I've got came from God. That's when people say, well, I'm just a self-made man or self-made woman or whatever. You know, um, well, you, you know, I always think if that's true, you're not going to last very long if you did it all yourself. But with God's help, right, I don't deserve in the natural to, to be where I'm at, to do the things I've done, to accomplish the things I've accomplished. To, I, I don't have the right background. I, I grew up in a small town in Mississippi. I didn't grow up in a big city. I didn't have famous parents. I didn't have all those things. I didn't have the right education, uh, really. But, but here I am, and I realize all of a sudden that God can do anything with anybody. I mean, if he can use someone like me, Think what he could do through someone like you. But, <coughs> excuse me, humility is a large part of it. I started over 300, or over 300 decades ago. That'd be, I'm very, very old. But uh, over three decades ago, um, that's a little bit better. And I, I started speaking and, 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 and preaching. And uh, gosh, almost four decades ago, now I was 15 years old. I'd go anywhere. You invite me, I'm just happy to be there. I'm just happy someone's letting me talk. I had a big vision, little reality, little reality, but a big vision. I remember starting out, Dave Martin International. People laughed, it's like, International, where y'all been? We ain't been anywhere. We just had a big vision. We had a little apartment, didn't have, we didn't even have a bed, we had an air mattress. Didn't have a dining room table and chairs. I mean, I'd answer my own phones. Our ministry is so small. I'm like, Dave Martin International. How may I help you? Can I speak with Dave? Uh, one moment, please. <clears throat> Hello, this is Dave. Like, wow, your staff is so good. I trained him myself. <laughs> Little reality. And we think, oh, I'm just waiting on God, just waiting on God. One day, I'm just waiting on God, when really, usually, it's God that's waiting on us. It's God that's waiting on us. I probably had some issues. Maybe I had some pride issues. I know I did because I had a lot of insecurity. I was pretty insecure. I mean, I used to be so insecure. One time I painted a blue square in my backyard just so Google Earth would think I had a pool. That was better than y'all gave me credit for on that one. That was a good, that was pretty funny. But um, people are, are they're insecure. Why are they insecure? Because they want to feel important. Like I said, you, a lot of you know my story. I didn't grow up with a lot. I, I, I wanted to be more. I wanted more. I wanted to be great. I wanted to be important. And, 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 and God couldn't really do a lot with that until I got rid of that attitude. Couldn't do a lot with me until I got rid of that attitude and began to humble myself. God really only uses humble people because it's the humble people that he can give his help to. God, I can't do it on my own. I understand that my gifts, talents, everything came from you. I need you. When I start thinking I can do it on my own, with my own gifts and my own talents, and, I, and I, all of a sudden I don't need him anymore, well, now I don't need his help. But it says this in James chapter 4, verse 6, he gives grace generously. It says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Pride, I can tell you this, is very good at hiding. You know, I don't have any pride. Like I said, it's impossible to sell books on pride because people think they don't need it because they don't think they have pride problem. But Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5, I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible. It says, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example of humility. You're looking, what does humility look like? Let Jesus be your example. I think about the depth of humility that it took for, for God to come down to earth, send his son Jesus to come down in human flesh. I mean, think about that. How do you even relate to what that was like? That he would come from living in heaven and coming down to this earth in, in human flesh, it'd be comparable. I don't know, it wouldn't be comparable. I said in the last service, it'd be comparable to him turning me into a bug 
and say, Dave, you're here as a bug now to save all the bugs of the world. Like that would be how you, you, uh, humble you'd have to become to go down to, and I'm here to save all the bugs. Don't, don't fly toward the blue light. Bzz, bzz. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Jesus only took on, not only took on human flesh, but he never tried to defend himself. We all like to defend ourselves. He never tried to get back at people who, who did him wrong. He loved everybody, even the people that mistreated him, because he didn't think about what they were doing to him. He was always thinking about what they were doing to themselves by making the decision. So when somebody mistreats you or when someone mistreats me, we usually think, well, you shouldn't mistreat me. You shouldn't treat me that way. But really, we should be more concerned about what they're doing to themselves because God will take care of you. God will take care of me if we put our trust in him. But what about them? What are they doing? What did Jesus pray on the cross? Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. They didn't understand what they were doing. And a, and a, and a lot of people who mistreat you uh, uh, don't really understand what they're doing to themselves. When you mistreat another human being, you're mistreating one of God's children. How many have children in here? How many get upset if someone mistreats your children? Now, I just have one son. Uh, thankfully, I don't have a daughter. Um, not, I mean, I would be fine if I had a daughter, but boys dating my daughter would not be good, right? Because you mistreat my daughter, and I'm, we're going to have a problem. I mean, if you mistreat my son, and you, you make fun of him, or you say something, bully him, or something, I, it, it's not going to be, I'm not very happy about that. I'm, I feel like I want to do something about that. How do you think Jesus feels when you mistreat one of his sons, one of his daughters, mistreat your wife that's his daughter or wives you mistreat your husband don't think the husband's the only one mistreating people just get that straight when you mistreat one of his children you're putting yourself in a pretty dangerous position and, and i want to tell you this is one of the most important things that reveals the level of pride the level of humility it's how you treat other people maybe people that you would think are unimportant we're pretty good at treating people good that we want to impress, right? We want to impress them. We'll, we're, we're, we're good at, at, at treating those kind of people. But, but what about the, the ones that maybe others don't care about? God cares about everyone. And the, the world's full of people who feel invisible and feel like nobody sees them and nobody cares. And, and you know, I'm up here on the platform. And, oh, you know, uh, everyone thinks, man, it was such a great day. Pastor, you did such a great job. And it's not anything about me. What happens here on Sunday is so many more people that make this happen than me. I just got to show up here and talk for a little bit. But the staff's been working all week to make this a wonderful experience. There's people in back rooms that you don't even see that are making sure that our online uh, the, is going out right now so that thousands of people this week will hear this message and be helped. There's a bunch of people over here with your kids that you didn't want to be with them. So you put them in that room. And they're over there loving your kids, praying for your kids. Sterling and Autumn are ministering to your teenagers. Come on. All that to make this a wonderful experience, a wonderful time in the, in the, in the presence of God. Thou, thousands of people are being touched today. I mean, there's, there's the band and the worship team, our worship leaders and our band that practice and prepare to help take you into the presence of God. The tech team that, that makes sure that you can hear and, and sometimes they make it where you can really, really hear. The parking lot team got here before any of you to set up cones and help you find a good spot. I mean, it takes a lot of people every week. I think a lot of times... People don't understand all that goes into making a, a Sunday happen, the amount of work and uh, to minister to you and your family and your, your kids and so people you can watch online and be a part of the service. And, and, um, and, and here's the thing, we do it all, it's all free, right? Anybody buy a ticket to get here? It's all free. It's all, you know, you're uh, welcome to come. And then we give people an opportunity to give, of course. 
And we know what the Bible says about that. It's part of God's plan for your financial future um, and, uh, and for taking care of yourself and for taking care of the house of God. So we give people an opportunity to, to give. And it's funny to me when people get upset, I can't believe the church is asking for money. Like, how do you think we turned the lights on in here? We didn't just send the electric company a New Testament, say, Jesus said, leave our lights on. Right? All the stuff your kids are making, all the supplies, the coffee, all that stuff, it takes, it takes resources. It takes um, to keep the air condition working, right? Obviously, you haven't given enough. <laughs> so pass those buckets one more. No, I'm kidding. Little, some people are like, it's usually so cold in here. I'm like, yeah. It's usually that today. We just want you to know. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And uh, one feels more cooler and one feels a lot hotter. But, but anyway. anyway, okay. I, I realize I get the credit a lot of times, but it's an incredible team. So humility, it's the opposite of pride. So we're declaring here at Motor City, humble month. We're going we're gonna to humble ourselves before God. Humble ourselves in the sight of God. And God exalts the humble. He gives grace to the humble. How many need more of God's grace? People think of themselves more highly than they ought to. You know, every time we criticize somebody, that's the fruit of pride. Criticism. How pitiful. We come to church. We come to church and we leave and all we talk about what's wrong. We go to lunch and instead of going, wow, what a great message today. Oh, the worship was great. We, oh, it was too loud. The lights, I don't like the lights. Sometimes they shine in my eyes. And uh, all we talk about is everything that, uh, I'm, I'll get emails just complaining about the crazy stuff. I don't like your shirt you wore today. <laughs> well, I don't like yours either. I didn't email you back. What if I emailed all of you and I just looked around and said, oh yeah, your outfit, not too good. I'm gonna it's amazing to me. Dumb, the dumbest stuff people talk about, instead of talking about how good, everything we do is to bring glory to the Father. Bring glory to God. And if you send an email like that, we're just gonna delete it. So, I've learned a lot through my years of, of, of ministry. I, I, didn't, I didn't know near as much as I thought I did. I thought I knew a lot more in my 20s and 30s than I, than I do now in my 40s and 50s. A lot of times you don't know how much you don't know until later, right? It's funny, when I was a teenager, I thought I knew a lot of stuff. My son thinks he knows a lot of stuff too. 17, I'm like, yeah, okay, you'll see. I was right, you'll see. Yeah, and, and we're, we're the same way with God. But, but one of the things I've learned over the years, if you're going to be in authority, you've got to be under authority. And you have to have a proper attitude about it. Anytime that you're under authority, you're going to be asked to do things, told to do things that sometimes you don't feel like doing or don't want to do. And, and God wants us to learn how to do that without complaining, without gossiping. And, and I got pretty good at not saying anything when I worked at other ministries or different things and, and, and just not saying anything, not going to, you know, but I'd get home and complain to my wife, right? I'd get home and complain. And God said, no, no, that's, it's the words that you're putting out. He doesn't want to be, God doesn't want to hear that, us complaining. I, mean, I used to lead worship at a, uh, a church years ago, and the, and the pastor had a, a list of songs. And they were all, songs he wrote. He, all, we all could, only could sing the songs he wrote. That was a little prideful. But anyway, um, I'm kidding. Y'all are having a hard time lightening up today, aren't you? you just <laughs> chuckle people. But I remember he, he gave, only sing these songs. And uh, he had this one song. And I rewrote it because I was upset. And so I was singing it to the worship team. We go, you know, here, here's how we should sing this song. And I'm like, I think now I'm like, oh my goodness, how prideful and how arrogant I was in that moment. And I thought, no wonder it took God so long to start using me because he had so much junk to get out of me so that I could get to a place of humility. You probably learned some of the things that 
that hurt you the most um, probably also taught you the most. Look at this um, scripture. I got, I'll wrap this up. Are y'all getting anything out of this today? I hope this is. I don't really have a place to wrap it up. This is a really long message. So it's just going to keep going for a couple more weeks. So I get, get through it. I didn't have a place to finish it. I got a lot of notes. But uh, we'll just stop because of the time. And uh, not because the message is done. But we'll just do it the whole month. It's, it's humble month. So we'll talk about humility all month. Isaiah 45 verse 3. And my voice is a little tired. It's a little raspy today. I, sound, I, I keep feeling like I sound like um, Louis Armstrong today. I just want to sing. I see trees of green, red roses too. Okay. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Okay, anyway. Isaiah 45 verse 3. And I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I humbly receive that. <laughs> and I will give you treasures. Look at this. Hidden in the darkness. What does it say? Secret riches. And I'll do this so that you may know that I am the Lord. Now, I, I love that. Because I, I just want to say, if you're here today, if you're watching online today, and you are in a dark season, you're going through a dark time in your life right now, if you will handle yourself rightly, and if you'll handle yourself humbly, it says that God is going to give you treasures in the darkness. God is going to give you treasures out of this. And, and if you're going through something, and it, it, it's hard right now, and you're, you're learning more, well, you're learning more than those maybe who aren't going through it. Especially if, if you want God to use you. How many want God to use you in your life? Because you're all a minister. I mean, your, your pulpit may not be up here on the stage. Maybe your pulpit is your, your desk at work. Maybe your pulpit's your backyard talking to your, uh, your neighbors. But I tell you what, whenever you ask God to use you, you better buckle your seatbelt. Uh, because... Um, um, he's gonna, you're going to have to process some of these things, some of this pride and some of these things that maybe we, we deal with. So um, I remember when it was time to finally for God to, to send us to begin our own ministry, to step out of the boat and begin our ministry. It's a long story, but it didn't happen overnight. It was a lot of process that went through, and sometimes I feel like I was doing the same thing over and over. Wait, God, when are you gonna, when's it going to come together? When's the picture? Have you ever put a puzzle? How many like putting puzzles together? Anybody like putting puzzles together? Okay, a few people. I, I enjoy puzzles. I like them. I like to keep them like 100 pieces or less. Those are my favorite kind of puzzles. Um, but anybody put together one of those like 1,000-piece puzzles? Have you ever done one of those? Yeah, the picture that you buy because the picture on the box is awesome. Right, it's beautiful, beautiful blue skies and green pastures. And then this little house way up on the, this hill. And, and it looks awesome. And you, and you see the picture. And you, then you dump out the pieces. And you start putting it together. And, and, and you feel like you're putting blue, blue, blue. This is so boring. So much blue sky is taken for. And green grass. And you're like, I want to get to the good stuff. Like, I want to get to the little house on the hill and the boat, and, the, and the, I want to get to, you know, and, and it seems like it's taking forever, and that's kind of like what it's like putting the picture together. You're ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to quit. I've, I've put together so much green grass, and God's like, no, no, just hold on. Hold on. There's some patience there. There's some humility. There's some things I'm developing in you, and then all of a sudden, you get to the place where you're no longer, it's no longer about you, and you're ready to bring glory to him, and that's when he begins to use you. I saw on the uh, a list on the internet a little test you could take to find out whether you were proud or whether you were humble. And a person who's proud wants to be well known. They want to be important. I look back and as I was studying this, I started thinking about times where that was me. I, went, I, I got on staff at a church one time and and there was like five reserved parking spaces for staff members. And I'll never forget, I was like, I wonder if I'm going to get one of those. And I'll never forget the, when I pulled up, and there my name was 
I was on one of the five reserve spots. I thought, I made it now. Look at that, me. I took a selfie with the, it's me on there, my name on the sign. I thought I just held my chest up high, and I thought I just made it, and I thought it was about the parking spot. It sounds a little prideful. I remember when we first went on television, and, uh, and, and I'd be out in public, and someone would go, I watch you on television. Oh, my goodness, I've seen you on television. I thought, oh, yeah, that was me. I'm on television. I'd be, I'd be thrilled to no end. And, 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 and I just began to realize that that stuff that I thought was so important really didn't mean anything. Really, what, I mean, what about all the people that we were able to help through television? Not that I'm thrilled that someone recognized me at a restaurant. I'm thrilled that millions of people heard the message of hope because of that television program. See, it's changing from a, a, a prideful, it's about me. How did I look on TV? Did I look, I looked, most people look heavier on TV. Did I look heavier on TV? <laughs> Instead, I changed it from that to thank God for opportunities to tell others about him. Thank God for opportunities to bring hope to millions of people. Thank God. It, it's, it, it, I was interviewing someone just in the last week or two, and uh, one of the first things they asked me is, what, what was my title going to be? That was one of the first questions they, they asked me, and I, uh, I, I thought, actually, you're not going to have a title because I'm not going to hire you. Because that's the first question you ask. If that's what you care about, your title, what's my title going to be? Uh, you, you're probably not going to last. Humility is a pretty good title to have if you want to work around here very long. That's a good title. Humble gospel helper. That's my title. I'm the humble gospel helper. The, the, the Bible says God's not impressed with your position. He's not impressed with your title, but we love it. What he's impressed with is when you hunger and thirst for him, when you, after righteousness, after a pure heart, he, he's, he's more interested in how you're treating other people. And listen, I'm not preaching this because I don't, I don't deal with it myself. I was getting on the plane yesterday to come back. I'm going to pray. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to read my message, got my Bible out. I'm going to be spiritual. I'm going to be ready for this morning. And the guy sitting next to me wants to talk. I don't want to talk to him. I want to be spiritual. He wants to tell me about his surgery on his leg and why he has this cane. And I'm thinking, I don't care about your leg. I'm just being honest. I'm praying, Lord, you shut the mouth of the lions for Daniel. Please shut his mouth so I can just... Oh, you don't like me to be honest. Okay. No, I said, Lord, let's just talk. Praise the Lord. I realized I don't have this mastered yet because I started thinking, well, what if, what if Joel Osteen was sitting next to me? Or what if some coach that I've always wanted to meet was sitting, would I, how would I talk? Would I, would I be, how would I be then? Yeah, let's talk. He'd, he'd probably be the one going, God, I wish this guy would shut up next to me. <laughs> That'd be me. How do we treat the least of these? That's what the Bible says. How do you respond to the, the least of these prideful people are not thankful because they think they deserve everything that they've got? Oh, there's so much more stuff here. I got to wrap this up. I hope this, this helped you a little bit. Let's just work this week at getting, our, uh, getting ourselves off of our own mind. Quit thinking about yourself so much and think about somebody else this week. How about that? Look for someone that's lonely or someone that's hurting this week. Prideful people, they're, they're not thankful because they think they deserve everything they've got. We don't deserve anything. Prideful people are know-it-alls. They've always done something else more than you've done. They know, they know more than, than you've. They, they, they know more than you know. How you talk to your team members, that's important to me. I, I, the dream team, when we're helping each other, and, and uh, that, how you talk to others on your team or others around you tells me a lot more about you. I, 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 I despise arrogance. I don't like, we're gonna talk about that a little later here. God talks about an arrogant or a haughty eyes or an arrogant look. 
I don't know, but I can recognize pride. I had a friend, a very good friend of mine who got it opened up some amazing doors for him. His humility opened up some amazing doors. And then in the middle of it, I saw he got a little prideful. I remember turning on TV one night and there he was. And in his eyes, I just saw it. I'm like, oh, it was so ugly. I could just see it. And I read the scripture about a haughty, had a, a guy that used to work here that one day I just saw it flip and I saw his eyes. I'm like, haughty eyes the bible talks a lot about it i just saw pride and it wasn't long until he wasn't here anymore the gentleman i was talking about on tv he's not around anymore pride cometh before a fall i'm telling you humility will take you a long long way i always say be nice to the chauffeur he may be your only ride to the palace humility I need this. I'm not going to, you want me to do that? You want me to carry that? I am not, I don't carry things. I'm, I'm this or I'm that. No, we're, we are all servants of the most high God. We're all servants of the most high God. And God watches how you treat people, how you treat others. It tells God more about you than anything else. Like I said, I'm not preaching this because I don't, deal with it, I deal with it myself. And so we all got to work on it. God, thank you for helping us, helping us all to be more humble, to, to understand the power of humility. Of course, we all want to be known and be seen and, 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 and have meaning. We understand that, but, but we also see how pride can hide itself in so many places in our life help us to find those places over the next few weeks as we deal with this humility it's not about what you drive or what you wear or the look on your face that's not that's not humility but lord help us to understand true humility when we say it's not about me but lord everything we do when we look at what you've done at our church and just to just a few short years, just three, a little over three years, and we can say, look at what we've done. There's churches that have, for years and years, the Lord, we understand it's not about us. We couldn't have done none of it without your blessing and your favor. Because we understand it's not about us. Everything we do is to lift up the name of Jesus. Help us this week to lift up you and everywhere that we go and everyone that we come in contact with hope today's message was an encouragement to you and if it was please take just a minute like this video uh, hit the subscribe button so that every time we bring out a new life-giving message you will be the first to know we'd love to hear from you put a comment in there and share why not share this great message of hope with someone else we look forward to connecting with you more and please visit motorcitychurch.org we'll see you next week